What is up guys? Welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be doing um, this exercise, exercise three, which is for deadlocks. So before we go ahead and actually jump into the exercises, we want to understand what, what the deadlocks are, right? So deadlocks, right? Let's go ahead and try to do this. So deadlock in a in real life example will be the following thing that actually happened to me. When I was trying to get into the university, the uni asked me to supply, you know, a copy of my living permit, right? But uh, the government was asking me, uh, well, it will ask to supply, uh, hold on, to supply, um, yeah, the, uni, it, the university asked me to supply a copy of my living permit to get my uh, immatriculation, right? Immatriculation, hold on. My matriculation, not immatriculation, it was my matriculation. However, to get my matriculation, um, the government was asking me for my matriculation to get the permit. So this is where you see where we have an issue. The university was asking me to supply my living permit, but to get my living permit, I needed my matriculation. So there was this kind of situation in which two things are locked and I cannot get any of those. So that's basically just a really good example of what a deadlock is. So going back, provide a common definition of a deadlock. We can do exercise one here. Exercise, let me just delete everything here. Exercise 1.1, .1. it is one. In this case, the definition of a deadlock. Um, a deadlock is a situation in which two processes need the resource need re the, the resources need the resource need a resource uh, from the other process. Which process need a resource from the other process and won't um, free their resources until they get what they want, so to speak. That would be like a really, really kind of like rough idea of what a deadlock is. Uh, we can actually take a look at what ChatGPT says here. So let's go ahead and check that out. Let's go here. Provide a simple, short, concise definition of what a deadlock is. A deadlock is here. A deadlock is a situation in which two products or threats are unable to pursue because each is waiting for the other to release a resource or a specific action. So I think this one is a bit, a bit better. Uh, so it's basically the same idea, but, uh, it's quite honestly the same thing. So a situation in which two or more processes or threats are unable to proceed because each is waiting for the other to release a resource or take a specific action. So that's exercise one. Now let's check exercise two. Right? So let's check exercise two. Incorrect use of semaphores can lead to a that lock. Create two simple code fragments using semaphores, one for each thread, where e a deadlock can occur. The thread is the execution flow in which a deadlock actually happens. Well, it's quite simple. We can initialize um, a that uh, well a semaphore, right? Semaphore, semaphore A, semaphore yeah, A, and we can call it for this as as one. Right, and we can do semaphore, semaphore B as one. Remember that whenever we have one, it means the semaphore is basically open, ready to be used. However, we define a function, which is going to be called process A. Let's check if this is what they want. Uh, create two simple fragments. Yeah, thread. We want threads, not processes. So let's do a thread here. Thread A. Right. No parameters. And then here we're gonna basically gonna do wait a right uh or acquire a more like acquire 
require a, and then here we can do do code here, and then we can do release a, so to speak. And yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it, you know? So <clears throat> yeah, just give me a second. So I kind of got to check something. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I was just, yeah, I had to check something in real life. But basically, we have this thing, right? And we can acquire first A. Then we can acquire, so to speak, B, right? And once we acquire A and B, we can do our code. Do code. Do code here. Oops. And then we can release A. And then we can release B, right? Oops. Now we're gonna do the same thing for for the fun for thread B, so to speak. Right? We can throw A, and this is gonna do B. This is gonna be A. And here we can do sleep 100, right? And here we can do sleep. 100. So how this will work is basically we thread A, let's just do the process, the actual uh, steps of the deadlock here, steps of deadlock. So the first step is, oops, thread, oh, we just, got, we got to just change the name of this. Thread A, right, is going, well, thread A gets access to a to b to semaphore a right so he gets the resources from sem semaphore a but then thread b gets access to semaphore b so as you can see we first acquire a and then we wait for a couple minutes seconds and then thread b can just jump in take b Right, like somehow for B, this changes to zero. Basically, it's, it's both change to zero, and then we want to acquire A. And once we acquire A, we can do our code and release the rest. Same thing for here. We want to to acquire B, and then we can do the code and release both semaphores. But in this case, both semaphores are already taken, so they're just waiting for each other. And we and we're we're basically in the definition of of our deadlock. Um. The threads are unable to proceed because each is waiting for the other to release a resource or take a specific action. So basically, threat A is waiting to get B, and threat B is wake is waiting to uh, to get A semaphore A, and that's basically what happens. So, uh, so yeah, so that's threat A gets access to semaphore B A, B to B, and then, but once. Uh, semaphore and one, yeah, and once semaphore B to proceed, and in this case we can do the same. And one semaphore A to proceed, and that's basically the gist behind this exercise. Uh, yeah, we can hear that lock present. That's basically how the dead lock works in this case right this is obviously pseudo code there is no actual programming language in this case but i think this is a good step to understand how that locks work so yeah i think this is, this is it for this exercise we're going to be doing 3.3 .3 in the next video which is a resource allocation graphs and yeah so we'll take a look at that in the next video and yeah thanks again for watching